How's it going? So, uh, the new uh, December, the new December season pass has begun. Um, as you can guess, there's new and exciting stuff, and they haven't done an update, a significant update, I don't think, since the beginning of November. So they have actually restrained themselves and and only did one update, I think, in November. Um, it might, maybe there was two, but I think there was only one. And uh, now we're on to December, and I saw this coming a mile away. I'm telling you right now, I'm I, I saw this, I knew it was gonna happen. Um, they um, nerfed. They nerfed Olioth. Yep, Olioth. Hey, TDL. Olioth has gotten a beatdown. Finally, hallelujah. <laughs> Olioth, Olioth got got their. Uh, oh wait, I can't. I told you. I I use Restream. It doesn't let me change my categories. <laughs> It's a pain in the rear. I could, I'd have to go all the way to Twitch, and I have to go to my stream, and I have to change it manually while the stream is running. <sighs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Just let it. So, what is it on? Diablo or miniatures painting or I don't know what. What's it on? How do I? What? What bot can set up Twitch when I'm running restream? I'll I'll do it if there's a way to do it cuz I would love to do something. Nightbot can do it in my stream chat? Really? Mm -hmm. I'll have to look at it. I do have Nightbot. I do have Nightbot. And I'll have to look into that for sure. If there's a command that I can type in my restream chat and set it, I do it. I don't know how that works, but I'll be willing to give it a go. Um, I mean, I must be reading it somehow when it gets loaded. I don't know. We'll try it. I'll, I'll give it a go, but I'll, I'll look at it afterwards. Anyway, um, so let's uh, let's open up the uh, let's open up the game update. So I have to uh, have to share this here quick. Let's see, desktop. Microsoft. Oh, that'll work. No. Is that the one I want? Yep, that's the one I want. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, these are the patch notes for. This is the patch notes for um, this month's December 5th update. Now, I'm going to skim over a couple of items um, just because I don't want to spend too much time on it. But, okay, so we, they, they've updated the deck builder. Now, I don't know exactly what that entails. Um, let's go look at it. It says... Uh, acquire a sweet new card or variant, but not sure what deck it is to make with it. What use it? Use our new deck builder to have a deck built for you. Okay, that's great, but my decks are full. I've got all the decks that they've given us. So unless they've given us additional decks, I don't see anywhere on it on here where it says, "Hey, and build five more decks or ten more decks." They need to give you more deck spots. I'm telling you. That's that's what's important right now. I mean, I don't mind trying new decks, but it's really hard without destroying some decks that I don't want to destroy. I mean, I change the decks, tweak them, you know, they all got their themes, but I don't have room to build another deck to play with. Um, I have a set of decks, um, like these ones here, Area 51s. Now, my Area 51 and Area 52 are my experimental decks. But a lot of times I, I like them and I'll play with them for a while, almost to the point where they earn a name. I would love to be able to build more decks, but they don't. This is the max: three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Was it twenty decks? 
I know, I have 20 decks who are saying, well, man, there's too many decks anyway, most of them can't be good. And that's true, but they all have decent, they all have themes that I need or want to play or I'm willing to give shots with. And there are other things I'd like to do. But, obviously, the only deck here that really could go away is my starting deck. But this is the deck I got when I started the game, that my October 2022 deck. That was, it's just the first... 12 cards basically that I got or the first deck I had before I, I built my first second my second deck and then since then I haven't touched that deck so this is what it was the original 12 cards I played with now I have updated some some uh, variants but it's this deck this is all it was basic stuff um, I'm sure it wouldn't win I haven't played with it pretty much since since last October or since October 22 um but i don't you know i don't really now albums is a new thing now okay so i'm gonna go on from the deck discussion because i i think it's potentially good it's probably really good for people who like the metas because that's what you're gonna get they tell you what they think is the best combos for these cards and then they say hey um we can tell you, we can take all the cards in your deck that have that stuff in it and give you the best solutions and we'll build your cards deck for you. And that's for the people who don't want to build their own decks, who like playing the metas, like playing things out exactly and what, what do they call it, uh, min-maxed, <laughs> optimized. Yes, I want a good deck. I want to build a deck. But I like to build it on my own accord. Think of my own strategies, add things to it, tweak things to it. And I don't like to play the metas. The the decks that everybody else is playing. It's just I, it's just me. I'm, uh, I'm crazy that way. Anyway, so for me, not a thing. I mean, I, I won't I won't use it. They don't have they haven't given me any extra decks to play with. They haven't given me the um, I, I just don't have the motivation for it. Somebody else that might be great. Um, I probably won't play with the uh, deck builder because I just don't have anywhere to put them. That's that. Okay, so let's go on to the next new feature they have. Albums. Okay, albums. This I, I kind of like the theory of this. Now, albums are kind of cool in that they're going to let you have... Uh, they're going to give you rewards if you can get a certain number of the cards in the deck. Now, as you can see here, this is the Bandomized ones. And note, note this. I have none of them. Tell you why. I don't want them. <laughs> and I really wish I had gotten some so I'd have a shot at what this venomized kingpin. Look at him. He's cool. And he's, he's cool. But now I have to try to get venomized cards. And I don't want them because to me they're generally kind of cheesy. I mean, not cheesy. No, I won't say cheesy. They're, um, I don't know. I just... I don't know. I, I, I can't. I can't get myself to. They're cool looking, I guess, but yeah, I know. But see, I have to get six of twelve of them now, and I, I imagine these are always going to be here. So in time, if I start collecting venomized, um, I might be able to get something out of this. But I still think this is a cool concept. They're going to add more albums, so hopefully something I'm actually collecting. But the thing is, I haven't collected any of the sets yet. I've been collecting cards I like, but they're all in different sets. They're all different versions of things. I may, I don't, apparently I don't have, oh, and these are venomized villains. So you have to have all well, these villains. They're not just venomized, because there are a lot of other venomized characters, but these are the venomized villains. And as such, even less likely that I have them, but they're all pretty cool. I mean, they're, I've just avoided them. I've seen a lot of these. I just never bought them, and now, you know. The people who collect one set of things is making out now. Okay, so here's another one. Jim Lee. Uh, there's some decent Jim Lee cards, but as you can see, again, I have none of them. Um, I've, I've seen this one. I've seen a lot of these around, actually. I've seen that one, that one. I think I've seen... I think I've seen this one. Um, I, I think I've even seen the Rogue. But again, you have to get, let's see, there's Deadpool. He's okay. I mean, 
He's getting it nine out of twelve for the Jim Lee variants, though. And so that's that's a lot. That's more. Um, Jim Lee X Men. Oh, they have to be X Men Jim Lees. I don't have a lot of those, but they're they're cool. And again, you get some cool things. Look, I mean, after uh, six, you get two thousand collector tokens. I mean, there's people who are going to have these done already. They're already unless some of these haven't. Not enough of them been released, but I don't care about the Avatar Boo. But these are cool. And I don't. What is this thing? Emote. Try using it in a game. Huh. I wonder what that one says. Bring it on. <laughs> That's probably bring it on or something. That's what it looks like to me. Bring it on. Bring it on, buddy. Come on. Dare you. That's what it looks like to me. It doesn't say what it is. It just says try using it in a game. So I don't know. Um, but again, so this album thing is cool because I like the rewards. I like the stuff you can get from them. Um, like you, you could even get a key for your spotlight cash. I have no idea what that one is. But all right, let's go see. Check it out. I actually have one of these. <laughs> I have one of these guys. I've seen this goose. I think I've seen this dazzler. Um, oh, I've definitely seen this Luke Cage. Maybe even this onslaught. But again, not things I collect because I don't know if I like this this style. But um, it's kind of a cool co Cosmo avatar, I suppose. And again, another emote. Should just be like woof. <laughs> so hey, I'm uh, I'm only uh, two more away from getting the Cosmo avatar. But yeah, see, I gotta collect these. In time, I may get a few. I might get them by accident because that's how I got Blue Marvel. I don't I don't think I actually bought him. But um, sometimes you get some by accident, and that's about the only way I'm likely to get any of those because I don't know if I'll buy them. But I'm hoping for more. They said every month they'll they'll release some more, and hopefully that you know I would imagine they'll just stay there, and you'll have a long list of things you're slowly filling up, and then you can pick the ones you actually want to do. But again, I do like the albums. Uh, featured mystery variants. Um, I guess that's that's kind of an interesting Cosmo, but I already have a pretty cool Cosmo. All right, so uh, when a new album launches or an album is featured, the premier the premier mystery variant in the daily offer. Let's go look at the daily offer. Oh, premium mystery variant in the daily offer section of the shop will change to a featured mystery variant. Featured mystery variants provide a premium mystery variant with an increased chance to provide a variant for a given album. E.g., the venomized villain featured. E.g., the venomized villain featured mystery variant offers an increased chance to provide a venomized villain variant. This doesn't say which one it is. It just says premium mystery variant. Hmm. But it doesn't say. The Venomized Villain featured mystery variant. <laughs> um, is there anything there I like? I like this. I almost bought it. Or I'm thinking of it. But I, I have to do it by tomorrow afternoon or whatever. All right, well, that's that. Okay, let's go see uh, let's see what the next thing is. Oh, look, a Christmas one. I don't like that they're putting them all here. I want to get Christmas ones through the random things like they did last time. You have to buy everything now. Um, featured mystery variants are only available for limited times. May change to feature different albums or content each time it shows up in the daily offer shop. All right. So as we get more of these, those will become more more common or more useful. At least you know what you might get. It's an increased chance of getting one that, that would go towards one of these. But the big note, the big news, um, I'm skipping over the new emotes, spotlight avatar frame. Have a new unique avatar frame. This also applies to previous earned spotlight avatars. Oh, Avatar frames? Oh, come on, really? Avatar frames? That's That's lame. Yeah, come on, guys. You could do better than that. 
When you make a new deck, its cosmetics, avatar, card back, and title are automatically chosen from among your favorites. It's cosmetics, avatar, card back, and title are my chosen. Huh. No, big, no, big deal. <laughs> big deal. Okay. Um, audio. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get on to the big news. Balance updates. Here they are. Here's the big ones. Now, they did some way major changes here. Way, way, way major changes. These are going to affect how a lot of decks play, how a lot of cards play. Several cards, anyway. Um, and it, they even say, this is a big change. Balance updates. This is a big patch for design as we're integrating work across a few months and trying to set everyone up for an exciting holiday snap season. So let's jump right in. <laughs> America Chavez. Wow. They just totally redid her. I mean, it wasn't a minor change. Not a little bit of power, a little bit of function. Nope. They just wiped her out. She just, America Chavez is now a 2-3 that bumps up one of your cards. Uh, the top deck. So when you play her, the top card will get plus two power. So this, this card actually makes uh, Howard the Duck interesting. Because now you, see, you play Howard and you get a card you want to get a boost and you can play America Chavez when you want to give a plus two to the next card you're going to get. So you just have Howard out there going, nope, oh, that's a good one. Let's play America Chavez now and bump up that card plus two. And then it'll come out and it'll be ready to go. Like if you're playing it with this year, this month uh, season pass character, Sebastian Shaw is this month's guy and he's kind of cool. Anyway, I think America Chavez might... Okay, here's the problem for me. She's a two, which is going to go good because I'm going to play her in my two is lonely deck. Um, so anyway, I will probably play her. Uh, I do have her, so I'll now that she's new and improved. I don't even know if she's improved. Uh, people were using her as a way to push all your... You play 11 cards that you really like and you play her and it forces your cards to be up, giving you better odds of actually getting the cards you want. So they were using her as kind of a get all the cards I want in the first five turns, you know, and be ready for turn six. Okay, so, and then you get her, and maybe you play her, maybe you don't, but it just depends on how the rest of your cards go. Because really, you get to play eight of your cards, right? So you get 12 cards, you get three to start, four to start by the first turn, uh, and then, you know, two, three, four, five, six. So you get five more, so you get nine of your 12 cards. So you, you got a pretty good shot of getting what you want, right? I mean... Well, of course, you're not getting six because that's America Chavez. So I guess you only get five. Maybe. I don't know. People, that's, the, that's the theory behind it. I don't know if it really works because you're not getting a sixth card. So, yeah, you got better chance of those cards coming up early. But you're not getting one of them on turn six. So, eh, whatever. But a lot of people played it. It was common. Um, and but she was a six nine now she's dropped to a third of her power and a third of her price but now she just boosts some random card up too makes her effectively a two five if you play that other card right because you're giving her you're giving plus two to something else and if that card plays then she's a two five which is a decent card it's not super duper but it's it's decent and if you're playing it in a twos deck giving any two in your deck an extra two power is not a bad thing but I think she'll play good with Sebastian Shaw now. And I think they're thinking that. It might even be mentioned in there somewhere. I'm not reading all that text, though. <laughs> all right. Here's the big one. Here's the one I'm celebrating. Celebrate good times. Come on. I'm so glad to see this. Oliath. Slap. You've been batted down, buddy. Okay. So it used to say, as it says, old. He was a 6'3". Destroy all enemy cards played here, including unrevealed cards, which to me was stupid as heck. I hated it. Now, to s now, <sighs> honestly, I wish it was the reverse. But at least there's something here, right? I wish it was only revealed cards, <laughs> making you have to be... A have to be last 
or allowing them to be played and then killed. I think that would have been even better. Allowing, allow, I don't mind if it kills the cards. I was never against that. You know, I don't mind that. I mean, that's okay. That's that's rough. But at least the cards should be allowed to trigger. Having cards killed before they play sucks. But on the upside, now, if your guys can expose before Olioth plays, you keep them. Olioth is lame. So Olioth is basically a dead card if you don't have advantage. So he's sh kind of shut down there. And that's big. So it's just going to make less... You're going to see less of Olioth because he's no longer capable of winning a game for you when you're losing he can't come back for you because you're not going to be able to stop those cards from playing and you're not going to be able to kill them um additionally they even made him weaker so now he's a 6-2 which means he cannot win an area by himself he is not a playable card at 6-2 at 6-2 so he's only good if you're ahead and you pick the right place Okay, so that's a significant knockdown. He's now weak to a point of almost unusable at 6-2 because almost any other card can match that on the sixth turn. And he's only usable if you're ahead, which means a lot of people are going to go, eh. so we're going to see a lot less Olioth. He's going to become less common, which is good because he's way too common. And I think people will be uh problem is you're going to be shocked by him more because you're going to expect not to see him it's just like the resurgence of leech that's right leech has had a resurgence seeing a lot more of him lately he is annoying when he comes up i'll tell you that and i've thought about playing him a few times but he's not very strong but man he can wreck a turn six big time all right so let's go on to the next gun and now we got through the celebration of alia this is kind of interesting uh they've they've nerfed luke cage they gave him a little bit of a bump in power, but now he can only save your cards in one location. And I think, I think that was an over nerf. Um, there's too many cards out there that weaken opponent's cards. And now those decks are going to become way more popular now, right? Because things like, um, hazmat or you know the hazmat combo with you know whatever you're doing that's that's re dropping cards hazmat uh, typhoid mary i mean there's all these cards that can lower your cards powers and luke cage was a big part of those to protect your own decks and now it only protects a spot so we'll we'll either see more of those cards or but what's actually going to happen is we're going to see less of those decks that hurt themselves because Luke Cage can't protect the entire deck, in, protect your deck, because you can only protect one spot. So we're going to see a lot less of the bulk lowering, and we'll see a lot more of the attack lowering. You know, we're going to see a lot more of Cyclops now because Luke Cage can't protect you from Cyclops unless you play Luke Cage after Cyclops and you see where he's shooting and you go throw him down on that spot and and revitalize your guys but he's just really lost a lot of his oomph um so i think i think luke cage is is going to be a lot less uh played i think they broke him i think he's too weak um shadow king they didn't really do anything to change him other than they're making him weaker still to me, going to a two was a was a nerf. They said it was a buff. Oh, he's cheaper now. You can play him. I think they act, it was actually kind of more of a nerf, but because of the decks he could play in as a three three. Now they've even taken more power away from him. Now he's down to a two two. The funny thing is about Shadow King. He started off as a five three. Never got played. I tried him a couple times, but it was just it was just too hard. He, he was too too much. And then they dropped him down to a... I want to say he went down to like... I don't know if he dropped to a 5 right away or if he went down to 4. But they've adjusted Shadow King like four four times, I think. This is at least the third change for him, if not the fourth. Um, I'm pretty sure he went from 5 to, to 4 to 3 to 2. <laughs> and this is a second 2. So it might have been just 5, five 3, 2, 2. So it's at least four changes. At least 
four changes and possibly a fifth. So they've, they've been nerfing him. He's a playable card. He's a big-time playable card now. He's really good, but now they're making him a little weaker because he's too good. I don't know. Alsa, a second nerf for Alsa. Things are getting rough for Alsa. Used to be three power when they gave her to anywhere you played a fourth card. And then it was two power to anywhere you place a fourth card. And now she's only two power if you play a fourth card in the same spot. Now, a lot of people do that anyway because they play it with uh, uh, Jeff and a uh, Nightcrawler. And guys that can move, you know, come in, get boosted, and move away. And put another card there, get boosted, move away. So they're allowing that functionality to still work. But she's no longer useful on helping out your characters that land in other locations. So like on turn six, you might drop a bunch of guys in different places and get that extra boost on everybody that no longer works because Elsa's no longer able to reach across territories. So... Alsa got a, uh, this is a pretty big nerf. I think that's going to make her a lot less common as well. She's pretty strong. And they go through to explain why they do all these things. Um, but, you know, with with so many other characters out there that can kind of prevent, um, that can cause problems for those, Shadow King is going to have less need to be played simply on the fact that there's going to be a lot less boosting going on without Elsa. But then again, there's a lot. I, I guess that's not necessarily true. I mean, now America Chavez is going to be out there and you've got Sebastian Shaw saying, hey, bump me up. So yeah, there might be things, but we'll see. Now this Kitty Pride one, whatever. All he did was give her one power back. I don't think it matters much. It's still, she's still plus one per turn. It's a minor change. I don't... Uh, Kitty Pride is still annoying, but she's not like... I don't think she's a game changer. She's a good card. That plays well. She's useful out there as a booster. Or uh, to get boosted. Um, still a little susceptible to things, but, you know, if you stay behind, like, that's the goal, right? Stay behind and the guys can't kill her with uh, Killmonger um, until uh, the end. I mean, they can if they can guess when you play it or where you're playing her. Um, anyway, uh, this one, this is terrible. T uh, Ebony Blaine, this is terrible. This is going to make, this is going to make Black Knight played everywhere that does discards. Discard decks are going to be like, yeah, play it with Lady Seraph. Um, and you get to drop some monster card that immediately goes to, to the Ebony Sword and you can't kill it. It's impossible to kill. Um, yeah, it, you cost four to put down. So what? You you get you get rid of Infinite with uh, Lady Seraph, and now you've got this four cost, twenty power, unkillable card. <laughs> can't be stopped. Nothing can destroy it. It can't be reduced. I mean, they just totally wreck wreck things. I I don't. I think it's terrible. And we're going to start seeing, the, mark my words, Black Knight is going to be showing up in every discard deck now. There's no discard deck out there that should be without Black Knight. Um, yeah, there's just, if you're discarding cards, you should be playing Black Knight. Um, because why wouldn't you? Lady Seraph, Black Knight, and whatever you want that's big. Because basically, it's a better than whatever you're discarding card now. It's, it's going to cost less than your Red Skulls and your Hulks and your... And it's going to cost less to all those six-cost powerhouses. Um, it's not going to come with any of their negatives, like the, the plus two that Red Skull gives or the, or the you can't play it here of Infinite. And then on top of it, you play that with something like Hala, and that that stupid Infinite not only powered up your Ebony Blade, play Hala on the last turn, and now you got uh, you've got Infinite in twice. You got two twenties in play. Ebony Blade, bad, bad, bad. They're gonna. I guarantee you. Mark my words. You're gonna see this card constantly for the next month. 
I won't have it in the deck, <laughs> at least not till I, till I get it. But uh, we're going to see it a lot. Black Knight's going to be everywhere. I bet you I don't play... I bet you I don't... I, I can play five games. I guarantee you I'll see Black Knight in at least one of those games. And if I play multiple... The only reason I say in one of those games is because there's other styles of decks. Not all are discard. But there's probably at least... And if I play four discard decks, three of them will have Black Knight. That's probably because the other guy don't even have it. <laughs> like me. So, yeah, that, this is going to get nerfed. Just as much as I can guarantee you we're going to see Black Knight. Come back in a month. Eh, two months at most. I doubt it'll be two months. I think by the, by the next month, by the next month uh, January, they're going to change this. They're going to get rid of something. Maybe get rid of the can't be destroyed or they can't have its power reduced or something. They're going to get rid of something there or they're going to make it cost more, like five or something because it's too strong, it's too much and yeah, they're, they're going to regret this maneuver. I guarantee it. It's going to happen. I've called it every time I've said a card's going to get nerfed. Every time I've said it, I was right. It happened and I've been right about but boosts most of the time. So if I say it, mark my words. Don't buy it for that. If you see a Black Knight you can buy, don't buy it for its ability. Buy it because you like the card and the potential of it. But if that's what you're, you're buying it for, well, enjoy it while you have it. Okay. Now we go on to the... Oops, I'm trying to scroll on my OBS. That's not going to work. Okay. The last... Um, okay, so there's two more, three more updates. Okay, so we got Ravona. This is minor. It's good, but it's minor. They boosted her up to give her a little bit more juice. They gave her, instead of a 2-1, she's a 2-3. So now she's got a little bit more playability as far as providing you with some points. She doesn't really do too much else. I mean, she's still a good card. Your cards have less power. Uh, like right now, like you see a lot of the cards on my screen right here. I, I don't know how much you can see. Uh, yeah, uh, Edge is blocking a lot of it, but these guys are all ones. Zero and one power guys are Ravona's play space, right? They're all going to be cheap and they're all going to uh, get a bump from Ravona. Ravona just knocks them down one power. Now, if you can do something like Ravona plus. Um, uh, Sarah on turn six, uh, Ravona plus Zabu, Z Zabu, yeah, on turn four, whatever. It, you can really get a lot of reduction in cost on some of these guys, and potentially bump them up, right? Uh, get a lot of a lot of uh, reduction cost. So this will make her get played a little bit more often. I don't think a lot more often. But you will see her definitely more frequently. Okay, so this one I I never play. I do have um, Thanos, but Thanos gives you all six of the stones that get mixed into your deck. So right now, then you get like basically what comes up with an eighteen card deck, right? And then all the stones or most of the stones will draw a card for you when you play it, and they all cost one. So you play one, it does some some ability plus draw a card. So I think five of them will draw a card. Maybe one of them doesn't. The Mind Stone draws two cards, and it was just two random cards. Um, Thanos goes from a 10 power to a 20 power if you can get all your stones in play. Now, they have to be in play. So if somebody kills some of your stones, he, he'll lose that power. He won't become a 20. So he's got an ongoing ability that says if all six stones are in play, he's a 20. So if you can kill some of those stones, he drops to 10. Um, but this one now makes it easier to get the stones in play, but also less likely that you're going to draw the other cards that you need because when they're drawing, they're pulling out stones. What do you do? It's a good deck to play, though, by the way, if all you want to do is play one-cost cards, like for a mission that says play one-cost cards. And lastly, this is the this is the last uh, change to a card, I think. Well, kinda. 
And there are some other changes, but they're related to this one. And that is unrevealed cards can't be moved. And there's only two cards that can affect uh, or move uh, unmoved cards or un unrevealed cards now. And it's Juggernaut, which his whole point in life is to move unrevealed cards. I mean, yes, he can he can move unrevealed or revealed cards too, but that's all what he does. I mean, that's Juggernaut's purpose, just knock something away. And you can't really kill Juggernaut. You can't break Juggernaut. So they, re they reworded Juggernaut to effect. So, but Spider-Man, who previously, to me, this is a boost for Spider-Man. Okay, so Spider-Man, the regular Spider-Man, when he, he comes into play, he grabs a card from the location that you played, and he takes it with him, basically is what's happening. Um, usually you're playing it purposefully to move a revealed card. You don't care what the new one is. I mean, maybe, but you don't know that you care. You're trying to get that card, that one of the cards that's revealed out of that spot and move them away. Um, so they don't change Spider-Man. He can't, but now that they, with this new thing, he can't grab a moved, uh, an unrevealed card. So now he can only grab a revealed card and he'll pull that one. So... That's actually, to me, good. To me, it's good for Spider-Man. Um, now, I'm hoping that they're smart about this, that they made this change intelligently, that it's not going to be one of those, oh, if you accidentally grab an unrevealed card, the move fails. That's stupid if they did that. I hope they didn't do that. Because <laughs> there's other things like like Gambit. He tries to kill a card if he hits one that's protected. It fails, okay? Because he randomly picks a card and fails. Well, if Spider-Man seeing is randomly grab a card, but if it's unrevealed, it can't move. That's dumb. I hope they don't do that. I hope it's still smart. Smart enough to only grab revealed cards. Stegron. Stegron, as you can see, can only affect revealed cards also. So... I think that's okay. I don't. I don't have a problem with that. Um, oftentimes, you want to move a reveal card anyway. If you're losing, sometimes it's good. It kind of gives him a little bit of the, a little bit of the juggernaut feel. But he he costs more than juggernaut. So unless you're playing uh, Ravona or something to break it, uh, make him cheaper. And so here's the update to juggernaut. It says included unrevealed cards. Here's arrow. Uh, move the last. Now this is interesting. They did not change her to allow her unrevealed cards, but what they did do is they made her able to move multiple cards, kind of like a little bit like uh, Magneto. Move the last enemy card played anywhere to this location. So she can move multiple cards. Arrow is joining most other move cards and will no longer affect anything unrevealed. However, to accommodate that change, we're lifting Arrow's restriction target to last card your opponent played regardless of what turn it was played on. This effect is fairly different and it played out like a bit of a nerf for us. So we're compensating her. So they made her a little stronger. Um, but whatever your last card was... Uh, let's see. Let's see. Move cards and will no longer affect... However, to accommodate the change, we lift Arrow's restriction to target the last card your opponent played, regardless of what turn it was played on. I don't know... I don't know what that means. I guess... I guess that means, like, if somebody skips a turn for some reason? What does that mean? I don't know. I mean, she's a turn 5 card, but she is a 5-9, so you could play her on turn 6. I don't know. I don't know what that's gonna, how that's gonna affect Arrow. She doesn't get played that often as it is. I don't see her all that common. She's out there, but will it help her? I don't know. Um, this is a bug fix. They fix Phoenix Force so that I guess if you happen to make a copy of one that's in play, that'll be able to move too. I haven't actually seen that yet, but um, I they do explain what situation that is. 
Okay, so that's it. Uh, they have they have some updates to text and stuff to clean things up. I'm not too worried about that stuff. Some minor bug fixes. They did apparently fix the... Uh, for those of you out there using Daredevil, you probably noticed that uh, Daredevil is um, has been problematic recently, <laughs> to say the least. When you play them on turn five, you can't always see the cards. Or if you're playing a, if you're playing the right screen, sometimes you can see the card through the back, but you can't really flip it and see. It was it was a visual problem. You couldn't see cards when you were supposed to be able to on turn five. It wouldn't show it correctly. They said they've addressed that, so we'll see. I, I've got one deck that plays uh, plays him. So anyway, hey, that's it. That's it for the updates for me um, at this point. Um, yeah, let's let's play a game.